Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It's my great honor to be here to talk about China Rapid Organization. Back to the 40 years ago, China in the Great Cultural Revolution. In that time, the people stopped work and stopped study from the university. And the China in that time, their influence in the world economic is minimal. Since then, China experienced the rapid urbanization and the economic. So the economic development and the study is minimal, and now is the second biggest in the world. And the urbanization, the region, started from 20th percentage in the 1970s, and then nowadays is 50 percent. So this is mean is about a half percent people now live in the city. And China, with the urbanization, the city geographic is changing. For example, this is 1995, Shanghai. This is the urban areas. After 10 years, in 2004, Shanghai, the urban area, is doubled. And more and more people come from the farm countryside going to the city. But however, because the China special policy for VUCO, and in China, the classified two kinds of VUCO. One is for citizenship in the urban, one is for the farm. The farm going to the city for living, but uh, is work, no problem. However, whatever the man is work, most people, the family still very hard to sit down permanent in the city. So then, every Chinese New Year, and there was a long week national holiday. Many hundreds of hundred millions of people travel around. So this is the last year, the people in the Guangzhou railway station. So every city, the railway station, like this one, even in the airport. And also the people habitat and expectation has changed. For example, in the 1980s, the people have the bicycle. Every family have at least one or two, but now it's gave up for the private car. The car ownership and is raised. Last year, 10 many private car met and sold in China. It's the biggest by the number. The car is not a solution. It's a part of a problem. And China, every year, build 2 billion square meters, the new building. The equivalent, like the total of the size of the New York. So this means last year, China built one New York City, and this year, and another, and the next, and the next. And also, the beauty energy consumption is counting about 30% the total national energy. So how about the future? Maybe history we could to look at. So this is the map of the new American energy consumption started from the 1950s by using the air condition. And then take 20 or 30 years, the energy consumption is rise, rise, and then pick it. China current in this level. So people will ask, how many years China energy consumption will be continue to rise, and how big? So this is the answer, and uh, we would look at. So this is the energy consumption in China and the world. This is the picture we look at. And the American and the China is two biggest energy consumption in the world. However, the interest we look at, so the left side, the half energy consumption by the developing country, they're counting about less than 30 percent of the population. So if we look at this one, the energy consumption by person, the American current about 12,000 kilo the energy. China current by person is just 2,000. If we look at Japan, we know Japan economic high efficient, but they still counting 6,000 kilo per person the energy. So if the China, the, the habitat, and the follow the with the style, and like America, will be six times bigger the energy consumption. If this really happen, I don't think it's good for everybody. So what is China's energy consumption? 
We look one of the example for the sumo county. This is the map of the China from the north to the south. Very cold, cold. And by the history, and the only north part of China allowed it to hit the building in the winter. However, for the, this Yangtze River, including Shanghai, is there. And my city, Chongqing, is here. It's about 32 million population. So this area is a county about 40% uh, of GDP. It's one of the biggest, one of the richest areas in China. The weather condition in winter is cold. In summer, it's hot. How, we, how cold and how winter? We look at it. So this horizontal is the outside the temperature. And the blue dot is the north part of China inside the air temperature. The red one is the north, the source, sorry, is the source. So we look in the summer, and the outside the temperature is 30 to 40. And for the north and the south, indoor temperature is over 30. I'm interested for the winter. Outside the temperature in north part of China is minus 20 C degree. But inside the temperature is around 20. So the temperature difference inside and outside is about 40. And however, you look at it in the south part of China. Outside the temperature is about zero to five degree. But inside the temperature, most time is lower than 10 degree. How people is survived? Look at the picture. You know in China, is one child only. So this is our little king and the little princess. The little king and the little princess dress like this one. This in the classroom is a form study. So now this, the China, the marketing economic, and the China had the money. So the people just simply go into the marketing, buy the air conditioning units. They want comfort, they want warm in the winter, and the cold in the summer. So it's this habitat, and the energy may be tripled. So China, how to deal with? How to go into sustainable? Chinese government make the promise China will cut the CO2 emission 40 to 45 percentage. China take it seriously. For example, in 2007, China State Council gave the order. So all the public building in China, air conditioning units not allowed if the temperature is under 26 degrees. And nowadays, in China, going from the green, low carbon, and eco city, we know 2008 in Beijing, Olympic is green. And we know 2000 Shanghai explore for low carbon. So 2011 is the eco city. So nowadays, in China, low carbon, green building, eco city, we are needed a sustainable development in China. And also, of course, international cooperation is really needed. So China operation for experience and pay more attention to international collaboration. China welcome international experts involved in China development and share the responsibility. So the conclusion for my presentation, China urbanization is one of the most important influence on home process in the world. After more than 10 years, oh sorry, after more than two decades, people's living standard has significant improvement. China recognizes both the environment problem and the limit of the consumption. What is the future? For the next 30, 40 years, it has the potential to swiftly focus on both the management of the exploitation and the new form of the open living. Thank you.